The Boxer. I've been in love with The Boxer for a while now. For those unaware, the Webtoon original series The Boxer is, unsurprisingly, a webtoon about boxing. But it's so, so much more than just that. You see, the biggest reason I love The Boxer is due to how they treat side characters. These side characters are given much more development, more screen time, and more love than even our protagonist, you, who's really only our protagonist in title alone. The Boxer's biggest selling point is that they treat characters like humans. They're people, and some of my favorite characters exist in this world. But these are all things I've talked about in practically every other Boxer video. Every time I've mentioned the Boxer, you can guarantee that I will be gushing over the side characters. However, there's been one person that's been a little absent from these videos. One character who's been ever present in the story, someone who's important to not only the story, but the biggest reason for the series. That character being our loved, or, or hated, Coach K. I'll be honest, this wasn't the video plan for this week. I was planning on doing a video talking about a bunch of different Webtoon characters. And a character from the Boxer was on that list. But while looking through some of the chapters, I saw BAM. The Boxer will be back. Hmm. Now might be a perfect time to capitalize on this break. What about fast passes? There already exist extra chapters. So with this series on a break and in the midst of what feels like the end of Yu's storyline, I wanted to take a look at the man behind the monster. I wanted to take a look at Coach K. It does feel weird that Coach K feels like the most like our main character. Not necessarily because he's the center of the story, since there really isn't a center to this story, but more he's the connective thread in the story. He's the reason for it all happening. Some might argue that Yu is our main character, but he's not really. You have to understand that the main character and the protagonist are different things. Yu is the driving force in the story. He's who we follow. However, we get no backstory. We get no depth, no personality, no goals, nothing really. On the other side, we have Coach K. For a while, we didn't get a backstory, but we still got a lot of depth, a lot of personality, goals, dreams, and such. We got a lot to Coach K, almost like our main character, or maybe like our villain. Our first introduction to Coach K is a little weird. It doesn't really appear to be villainous, more eccentric than anything else. He's a boxing coach, teaching the strongest of the strong, the most talented in the world, as most of his ace boxers have been champions. So of course he's going to be a little different. Of course he's going to be a little weird, a little eccentric like when he first meets you. Coach K is all about the thrill of the sport. He's always looking for a new strong champion, always traveling to new places, scouting new talents, which is where he meets you, as he sees someone who looks bored while getting beaten up. So our lovely coach has a theory. The use time flows differently. So he does what most people would do with a theory, tests it right away by trying to knock a child out. Like I said, eccentric. And also, in retrospective, kind of creepy, as he doesn't want to train anyone other than you. However, he does eventually get his way, as you does choose to be a boxer, if just to pay some hospital bills. Thanks to this, we get a lot to Coach K. Coach K training, or planning, or just scheming. Like his interaction with Josh, this kid. Someone who's dedicated so much time and effort into becoming the best at what he does. Yet Coach K kind of just laughs at his effort, explaining it was all for naught. And the worst part is that he's kind of right. As used talent in zero days of training can easily destroy Josh. Coach K is kind of right here. Josh's skill could probably never compete with most other people in his circuit. And speaking of other people, K never really seemed to worry about these other people. K very clearly wants the victory, but during basically most fights, he never trains you for a specific fighter. We often see how the other side trains thanks to these interviews, which are a great way to build character. 
we see how a bunch of people deal with an insurmountable force coming up. Like how the rookie killer John Taker was a little nervous for a new threat. How Kasim's overconfidence led to his downfall. How Jean-Pierre literally fought in life-threatening situations to step closer to perfection. And that's just the first season. Many of these people, except Kasim, pour a lot of time and effort and emotional investment into training, preparing, and fighting you. And that's why this series works as well as it does. Because it gives time to these characters. However, apparently Coach K doesn't feel the same way. As whenever a new opponent appears, Coach K's first thought isn't how to have a respectful match against his opponents. No, it's how he can whip up a battle to have the most fun for himself. To scare his next opponent. Whatever way to show the world, the boxing community, his opponents, whomever, that you is a force to be reckoned with. K only wanted one thing, and that was the title, the belt, to be on top. Like I said, he doesn't care about people. He doesn't treat them like humans, but a means to an end. Like obstacles to show the world how strong you is. This starts right away, right in the first match with John Taker. We hear it straight from him. What a dilemma. I'm debating exactly how I should cook him up. To shock the crowd. This is a person, a person with their own dreams, goals, and a really heart-wrenching backstory when you get into it, but Coach K sees a means to an end, a way to shock the crowd, a way to show off how much of a monster you is. Why this is important is because it shows K's slide into who he really is, an arc where we realize that Coach K isn't the person we thought he was. But the most interesting part about the series is that when we start to hate these characters, that's when they hit us with their backstory. It happened with John Taker, it happened with the Santorino brothers, and it's currently happening with Coach K. During our most recent arc, the battle between you and Aaron Tide, the battle that Coach K has been building you up for this entire series, every battle, every moment of training and showmanship, every single little detail was all for this fight. The fight we're in the middle of right now. But the question is why? Why does K care so much? Why does he train up monsters? Why does he want these two to battle? Why is he like this? Like always, to know the why, you have to look back. We've known a little bit about K for some time now. So that he's very famous for finding monsters of boxing. That he himself might have been a boxer or is at least a decent fighter. And that he was a soldier. His soldier side was given to us in glimpses, once when talking about when time stands still, and another time when we're given Carmen's backstory. But very recently, everything, or at least mostly everything that's important, was given to us. So if you would please, let me explain to you the tale of the boxer, the soldier, the coach, Kay. Kay was a talented boxer, so skilled that he could have made it big. He could have been the king of the ring, a world champion, but no. He wanted to fight the good fights. He wanted to be a soldier. As he puts it, No matter how good I am at boxing, and no matter how much fame and glory I achieve, that's not going to save or protect anyone. It's just for self-gratification. I refuse to be a puppet king in someone else's world. I want to fight the real fights in the real world. Uh... What? What? Fame, glory, self-gratification? Those are all reasons that K does what he does. Or at least how he convinces others to box. He doesn't want to be a puppet king? My god, there's no better term to describe K. He frequently calls people trash, weapons, monsters, tools, and almost never human. He always acts like other people are his puppets. This was a younger K, a greener K, a more optimistic K, a happier K. K would go on to do a lot of good in the army. A lot that I don't want to show on YouTube for obvious reasons. But there is one thing I wanted to talk about, or at least one person. This kid. Someone K saved. Someone who wanted to grow up to be a soldier like K. K has never felt more useful. 
never felt like his life has had more purpose. We all know where he ends up, don't we? As years later, he would meet this child again, on the field again, but on opposite sides. And Kay's hand was... forced. This is where Kay's slide starts. After this moment, he went back home, to his wife and son, but it never felt right. The peace wasn't what he was used to. He promised he'd stay home after one more mission to say goodbye to his team. But while away, both his wife and his child were killed, leading him to stay in the fight, eventually leading him to this moment. Stallone, I've come to a realization that there's value to life is just an illusion that humans want to believe, that there's never been any rhyme or reason to it. Thus, we are free. If our lives will meaninglessly fade away anyways, we have to live it to the fullest. The strong should enjoy the superiority they have to their heart's content before they die, and the weak should struggle miserably before they die. I'm free. This line, in the midst of actual war and death and destruction, is who Kay really is. This is what Kay truly believes in. Life is inherently meaningless, so why not enjoy your strength over others? Why not enjoy the time where you stand above everyone else? This is who Kay became. Someone who was destroyed by the realization of the world and became the one thing that he hated. That's why he so desperately wants you and Aaron to fight. Because to Kay, there is no other meaning in life than watching people struggle and fight to survive. But that's all for this week. So like always, thank you for watching, and I hope I'll see you next week. Take care.